Okay, so we just want to welcome everybody back to the USA Hockey webinar series. Um, we got an awesome guest today, uh, Maria Mountain and Steve Thompson, our ADM regional manager. Um, so again, uh, post uh, any questions on the Q&A if you're on Zoom, and we'll try to get those answered. And if you're on Facebook Live, same thing, just put in the comments box and I'll be attending to both of them. So if you have any questions for Maria, for Steve or anything uh, along those lines on, you know, training your goalies or really training your athletes, um, we'd love to hear from you. And thanks again for watching. And uh, well, the show is all yours, Steve and Maria. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for attending. We're really excited for week number two of our goalie centric webinar calls. So Today we have a huge guest. This has been something we've wanted to do for a long time. We have exercise physiologist Maria Mountain on, and she is really the world leader in goalie specific off ice training. And we figured that this couldn't be a more appropriate time with all of us being at home and, and wanting to make the most of this COVID and not seeing it as an excuse for why we can't get better, but actually as an opportunity of ways to leapfrog other nations and other goalies that are trying to take the same jobs and how can we become the world's best at what we do and use this you know pandemic to our advantage instead of seeing it as a situation that may challenge us so today again Maria is here to help us with that and just a little background on Maria she has been an exercise physiologist for 26 years has a wealth of knowledge in the strength conditioning world and for the last 19 years has actually dialed in her her role with goaltending specific. And so Maria, thank you for doing that for our whole goalie community. And thanks for being here today. So what led you specifically to, you know, drawing your, your methods towards the goaltending world? Um, I think it's, you know, when I grew up, I'm old enough that girls didn't play hockey in my hometown at all. And I always played road hockey with the boys and I was always Ken Dryden to Mike Paul Mateer, you know, and uh, so I, I, I think it was like I sort of have that goalie gene, and then uh, I specialized in training hockey players when I started out, or not when I started out, but I, you know, had good success with hockey players and skaters and goalies, and so that led me to start uh, what what started as Hockey Training Pro probably twelve years ago, uh, the website, and as I got into it about four years down the road, anytime I. Uh, posted content for goalies because I had trained a lot of goalies and the position to me as an exercise physiologist you know the the biomechanics the the physiology the anatomy the injury um you know that they get it's it's fascinating like it's it's a huge sandbox you know for for a geek like me so um I I just decided you know what I'm just gonna play in that sandbox all the time because nobody was doing it. Um, when I started, uh, coaches, strength coaches would, some wouldn't even discuss it with me. You know, it's like, they don't need anything special, but like, like, like you're, you know, how stupid are you to even think that? And, you know, when I look at it and I think it's an advantage that I never played competitive hockey, I play, I go out now and I fall around in my hockey gear and sometimes the puck hits me, but you know, I think it's an advantage because I had no bias. There was no, oh, this is what I did. I just looked at it like a scientist. What does this, what does this person need to do? Okay, what energy system is that? What muscle is that? Oh, that they're using that in a shortened position, in a closed pack position. Oh, geez, how can we help them do that but minimize the wear and tear on their joints? So, you know, that's sort of a long answer, but it was getting into that sandbox deciding I wanted to play there for the rest of my life. And, and I, I do, I love goalies. Um, I think there isn't a more demanding position in all of sport. And so I want to help them have, you know, find enjoyment. Winning is fun. Being healthy is fun. So let's do that. Excellent. Excellent. And before we kind of jump into the nitty gritty of today's talk, I, we have so many athletes that would love to work in the strength conditioning field or work in the, the goalie centric area of those any advice you have for some of our, you know, formerly retired or newly retired athletes or, you know, soon to be that are looking to do what you do? Yeah, I think it's, you know, and sometimes like, well, I was a goalie and I did lots of training, so I'll go do that. I think it's really important that somehow, and I don't think, you know, I, I probably went a more traditional route. I have an undergraduate degree. I did a master's degree. I worked in sport medicine clinic as an exercise, phys, you know, physiologist and, sort of put in my time. I don't know that you have to 
do six years of university to get that background, but you do have to study, you know, the physiology, the biomechanics, the anatomy, so that you're not just doing what makes common sense, because often what makes common sense doesn't make science sense. And that's where goalies get in trouble because they're training in a way that, oh yeah, this looks really goalie specific. And, and you see Instagram flooded with it, especially since we've all been home, you know, and, and people are making at home workouts for goalies. And it's really not the right thing. And I, and I think the other part is, um, you know, when, when I owned my gym, I just sold it this fall, but when I owned the gym and people wanted to come, you know, to work and, you know, they say, well, but you know, I just want to work with the athletes. Like, I don't want to work with like, you know, regular people. And, and we only trained athletes of, of different ages and abilities, but it's like, no, you have to have a passion for helping people achieve their goals. And it takes time. You know, I, I was a strength coach at the university while I was working full-time at the sport medicine clinic. For, you know, so I was a strength coach for the men's and women's hockey team, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's volleyball, and the whole track team. And I think I got paid maybe two thousand dollars for the year. <laughs> you know, and and uh, so um, you know, you 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 have to love it. You can't just think like that looks really cool, uh, because it is a very demanding. It's your heart and soul. Uh, so it's yeah. That that would be my advice. It's awesome, but you have to love it. So it sounds like looking for some universities with kinesiology degrees or, you know, if you don't end up going down the college route, then really understanding that it's going to take a passion and some patience and, and understanding that financially it may take some time for you to get where you're at. But if you love it, then you're willing to, to wait and to work through it. So awesome. Yeah, and I think like there's some great places you can mentor and, and, you know, uh, like apprentice. So that would be a, a, you know, another good route, but it's going to take, yeah, years. Excellent. Sounds a lot like hockey in general, right? we got to put our time in. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So dialing into today specifically, uh, we're all at home. We're all looking at ways to get better while we're here. And again, make this an advantage of ours and not seeing it as, you know, a disadvantage that we may have down the road. So What's some advice for our athletes that are at home? How can we get better as goalies and as athletes as, you know, as we're all stuck at home today and for how long? Yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll jump into it. And I kind of put together some talking points that, you know, I can kind of work my way through and then, um, and it's, it's going to be, uh, maybe a little light on the details specifically, because I think if we use the time me showing you, five exercises you know it isn't really going to be as helpful as giving you an overview and i'll give you some references that you guys can check out um and then answer any questions that you have so does that sound cool sounds excellent okay so we'll dive in um so my dad uh used to always say to me um you know maria you never know when you're being lucky and uh you know like get dumped by your first high school boyfriend maria you never know when you're being lucky. You know, <laughs> um, and anytime he said it to me, I, hope I, I was pretty frustrated and I always felt like, you know, just maybe giving him a little smack in the mouth, you know, cause it was, cause it was coming, cause I was feeling at a disadvantage, but he was right every single time. And so that's a thing that we have to keep it in mind. And it, it's like, well, you know, some of us think, well, how can this be lucky? But it's how we look at it and how we choose to approach it. So I want you to hang on to this thought. And the thought is somebody is going to have their best season ever this year. And so how can we make it so that's you. <laughs> and so I'm going to go through kind of five rules to, to help it be you, because I guarantee we're not going to come back on the ice uh, and everybody's save percentage is going to be like, uh, start with an eight. Like there are going to be goalies that light it up uh, even despite this thing. So the first, the first little rule I have for you is, is stop saying because of COVID. So we've all been locked in for, I don't know, two weeks or three weeks. I don't even remember what day it is sometimes, but we've been in for a while and I'm still getting emails of people say, well, um, but I'm off the ice right now in brackets because of COVID. <laughs> it's like everybody is off the ice right now because of COVID or, you know, so it's, it's just put that out of your head because I think also, 
you're you're ingraining that idea that this is your excuse and uh <laughs> i not i don't want to be grumpy or anything but it I think some of you are going to put that excuse in your back pocket and then we're going to get to tryouts and you are not going to make the team or you're not going to perform well. And it's going to be like, Oh yeah, because like I didn't, I couldn't go to my goalie coach and I couldn't go to the gym because of COVID, you know, and it's like everyone is in the same boat. So if it was, if it was just you or just your community, then okay, maybe, but that isn't going to be an excuse. So let's just put that completely out of our, out of our mind because COVID isn't a part of our vocabulary anymore for us right now, this is our new normal for right now. So we're going to just move forward with it. Rule number two, we have to look for a different way. So correct. We can't go to the gym. None of us can go to the gym so we can look for a different way. But I don't want you to try to reinvent the wheel and, and think you have to come up with new ideas because the fact that COVID is here doesn't change where we're at in our off season. The majority of you would be in your off season anyway by now. And so you would be starting to train the proper way for next season. So, you know, here's a workout that, that we could do at home. We could do, uh, 50 burpees, 50 push-ups, 50 crunches, and 50 jumping jacks. Then we could do 40 of each of those. And then we could do 30 of each of those. And then we could do 20 of each of those. And then we could do 10 of each of those. And if I posted that on Instagram and said, oh, this is a killer workout. This is really going to be good for goalies. Some of you would probably do that because you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's so hard. But that's not the right type of training that you should be doing and ever <laughs> uh, and in particular at this phase in the off season so you know you need to train like a goalie whether we're locked in the house or whether we are, can go to the gym or go to the rink we still have to train like a goalie following the proper principles so that's looking at mobility um now if you are a young goalie like maybe 13 years and under, um, or a parent of a young goalie. If you go to my website is goalietrainingpro.com. If you go there at the bottom, there's a search box. If you search safe stretches for young goalies, there's, there's a resource for you that will give you some exercises you can do. Um, if you are sort of 13, 14 up, I did a series just over the last couple of weeks that's uh, called the 10 secret habits of pro goalies. And I put it on Instagram TV. Those are shorter versions. And I put it on my YouTube channel, which is goalie training pro TV. Uh, and it's 10 videos. Um, and each day it sort of looks at a different habit, but in there, there are mobility workouts, there are strength workouts, there are stamina workouts, little mini workouts that you can do at home. So for mobility, you'll go to that video series and you'll look at secrets one and four, and those have mobility workouts for you. For strength, if you're a young goalie, a lot of you just don't even have the basics. And so you know, get out your camera, your phone, and video yourself like doing 10 perfect push-ups, uh, holding a plank for 60 seconds, doing a squat pattern. Because when I go to camps and there are younger goalies there, they don't have the basics. And I know you do that sometimes with your team, but you're not doing it properly. So you're not getting the benefit. And as you get older, you know, you, you need to have those basics. So when I worked as a strength coach at Western University, we would have athletes come in in their first year of university at 18 years old, and they weren't doing proper push-ups or proper squatting patterns. So I had to take that time to teach them those proper movements when really we should have been adding a lot of load and really, really making them stronger. But instead we had to take the time to build a foundation because they were, they had coaches who were interested in, you know, making them tired but not having them do it properly. So for younger guys and girls strength, that's, that's what I would look at. I would look at the foundations for the older athletes, like 14 and up um, again, go to that series and look at secrets two, five and seven goalies do have to be strong, but you can't just build 
big, strong, dumb muscles. You can't be using leg press machine and knee extension machine and just trying to do heavy back squats. You need to train smart and you need to train your muscles to be strong, but also to be stable. Um, and so, you know, that, that means building up to some single leg work. It means working in the frontal plane side to side, not everything just sort of two feet on the ground in this sagittal plane straight forward and back. And I explain kind of all the details and I give you workouts you can do at home um, in, in that series. So go and check that out. When we talk about stamina, um, you know, a common mistake is that, oh, goalie's on the ice the whole 60 minutes, so we need a lot of stamina. Um, we need to do cardio, and then you go out and run for an hour because you're on the ice for an hour. Uh, or you do really long intervals, like five-minute long intervals. Uh, that's kind of missing the, the mark. So what you need to do instead of going to the track or just going for a run is your training needs to include you know, changes of direction. It needs to include different patterns. It needs to include static holds in different positions because I don't know about you, but when I play on the ice, when I'm moving, my legs will get tired. But if I get stuck, like if the puck gets stuck behind the net in the corner and I'm down, you know, covering my post and I'm low in my legs, that's when they really get, you know, burning and shaking and feeling like they're full of cement. So those static holds are an important part of it. The vertical agility, so recovering from your butterfly to your feet and then moving, that's what your stamina should look like. And there's progressions, but um, again, I give you specific examples in those videos, secrets three and secret six are all about stamina. And if you go through, you'll see which is which. But that series gives you a nice little workout plan that you could follow. It's, it's not everything you should do, but it gives you a really good start. So, you know, there's mobility modules that you can do every day. And then you can alternate between the strength module and a stamina workout and a strength workout and a stamina workout. And so that'll keep you keep you rolling and give you some goalie specific work. So it might almost it might or might not <laughs> seem easier than what you do in the gym because it will be different. But we're not interested in making a workout that's hard. We're interested in making a workout that's effective at helping you stop more pucks and preserving your hips so you can have a long, healthy career. So it will be, you know, once you get the hang of it, it will be, can be very hard. But the point of designing a workout isn't to make it as hard as possible. It's to make it as effective as possible. Rule number three, uh, develop your skills. So what needs the most work for you? And this is huge. So now when we're talking about the younger kids, this is where I'd love to see them spending their time because this pays huge dividends. When we're young, like, you know, the saying, you never forget how to ride your, a bike because we learn when we're little kids. So that becomes hardwired into our nervous system. As we get older, our nervous system isn't as plastic uh, as it once was. So, you know, if you look at, so look at me, I'm I learning to play goalie as an adult. I'll never skate and move as well as a kid that learned to play goalie, you know, since they were five or six years old, because I don't have those movement patterns hardwired. I was lucky because I grew up in Canada in a time when we all had backyard rinks. And so, you know, I have a bit of that foundation, but we need to learn skills when we're young. So puck handling, catching. I know we're off the ice, but once we get back on the ice, work on your skating, learn that skill rather than trying to train like the pros and, and build strength and power. That isn't really going to pay off because you also don't have the physiology, the hormones to make the most of that kind of training until you get a bit older but motor patterns and skill, you can lay it down like crazy. So for you, this is, this is where your money is. And, and even, you know, those of us 14 and up, we need to spend a lot of time working on this. So puck handling, you know, just use your creativity, um, but invest in 
sort of high return movement. So I know that a lot of you will be like, oh yeah, because I'm going to do like those one timers to, to score an empty net goal because <laughs> it looks so cool. But it's like, okay, well, maybe you should just be working on like receiving the puck and, you know, or the tennis ball or whatever you have to use, you know, and, and making a simple move and then a good clean pass for the bulk of your time. So not just sort of the highlight reel stuff, but, um, and yeah, and a lot, lots of people have emailed me saying, oh, what are some stick handling drills? Well, I'm not really the one to ask because I'm not an on-ice goalie coach and my stick handling is terrible, but it's like, like make an obstacle course and, and just go for it. Like you, you know, just use your creativity. Uh, Hand-eye training. Hand-eye training, uh, the only, again, you can use your creativity with it. The, the actually I'll grab my glove. The only stipulation I make is that you wear your glove if at all possible, because um, and I discovered this because I really have a terrible glove hand. <laughs> and so I was practicing outside with the lacrosse ball and passing it off the wall and catching. And I was actually quite good at it. Not to brag, but uh, so then I thought, well, this must be my glove's fault. Then clearly I need a new glove, which so again, I am a goalie at heart because I want new equipment all the time. So I went and put on my glove and started passing the ball. And sure enough, just like the puck, it's bouncing out, bouncing out. So then I uh, was giving my glove a little talking to. Why are you doing that all the time? Why do you make me look bad? And I realized that here's, this is, this is where the palm of my hand is. But this is where I'm supposed to catch the puck when I'm on the ice. But this, that's where I'm teaching myself when I see an object coming this is where my hand should be so it lands here well if that's my motor pattern yeah yeah puck's gonna be bouncing out of the heel of my glove all the time really my hand should be down here to catch an object that's coming here so that is a motor pattern so wear your wear your glove when you do that if at all possible uh, and in the video sequence, I did a thing on hand-eye stuff in uh, secret number eight. Rule number four, this one, and we got one more. So be consistent. I think of it as like, go to goalie university. Uh, you know, so you're going to have a plan. And I think a lot, you know, and so many, lots of questions on Instagram. How long should I train? I train for 10 hours a day right now. No. You don't ever need to train for 10 hours a day, uh, but you can be, you can be working on your game if you have a passion. So have a plan, know what you're going to work on today, what you're going to work on tomorrow, what the plan for next week is, and that'll be physical, it'll be technical, and it'll be mental. So, you know, the physical might be doing some of these little workouts I put together or workouts that you have from your strength coach or your trainer. Technical could be puck handling. It could be your hand eye work. Uh, the mental could be maybe you're going to download a meditation app and see if that if that suits you. If you think that's a tool that you can use, maybe you're going to go on YouTube and just search, you know, goalie saves and study what's okay. What's that goalie doing? What are they thinking? What are they seeing? Oh, that's interesting how they did that. Or even you know, watch. I think NHL Live is showing all the games this season so far for free. So go and study the game. Read one of Justin Goldman's books. My favorite is Embracing the Grind. Um, you know, so be a student of the game. There, there are ways you can improve yourself other than just smashing your body because that isn't what your body needs right now. Rule number five is you're going to build your most important muscle. And your most important muscle that every goalie needs is resiliency. Because if you're not resilient, you're not going to make it to the next level or you're not going to make it to the level that you want to be at. Every goalie faces hardship, which is why I love Justin's book, Embracing the Grind. And you see that the higher up you go, the harder it gets. So you think, oh, gosh, if I could only play at that level, that would be then I'd have made it. Then it's 10 times harder than where you are now. So you have to be resilient. And one of the things that even I've been using for myself is, you know, I just decided that one of my superpowers is making the best out of any situation. So even with this COVID thing, you know, it's a very uncertain time for all of us. Well, even if I, 
lose the business, we lose our house. You know, it's like my superpower is making the best of any situation. And I know that I know that I'll be okay because I can do that. So you tell yourself the same thing and you'll carry that through every experience and just we're trying to be ready for the next opportunity. That is our goal. So those are the five rules um, that I have for you. I, I think too, if you're looking for um, another place to start, like in mobility is something you want to work on the, in the app. If you just search in your app store, search butterfly challenge. It's a free app that um, gives you a wider butterfly flare in like two weeks. So that's, uh, and it's, it's very basic. Anyone can do it, but that's, that's another free resource that's there for you. So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. I didn't want to just come and give you, you know, five exercises because that you need, you need vision, more vision than that. Uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have. That was excellent. And uh, really rang home with so many things that from our ADM model that we push and specifically things that kind of stuck out as you're going through that was we always ask with practice design, what does the game ask of you? and then design your practice around what the game is truly asking us to do when the game starts. And then what you're saying here is specific to off ice. What does playing goal ask of us? Which muscles are we recruiting? What's our work rest ratio? What's our heart rate at? Then let's train off ice what the game asks of us. And it, it just really rings home. I remember as a college athlete, a strength and conditioning coach would get so angry with us because we'd be doing these things that are very hard, like you mentioned, but it wasn't really what hockey asks of us. And he would always say, you know, running a marathon is really hard too. But for you to go run a marathon right now, outside of it being very challenging, you're probably not going to make yourself a better athlete or a better goalie or a better hockey player. And so to that point, another thing you brought up was social media today and the platform that everyone now has an opportunity to be a strength coach. Every goalie coach can now give advice on how to train. That can be good and bad, right? how do you recommend for our goalies and our families to kind of weed out what information is good and makes sense for us to follow and what is just someone with really great intentions they're a coach but they maybe don't have a background in strength conditioning and they just kind of post something that they saw on a crossfit website and say man this would be a great exercise for my kids to do but coming from your background it might be something that might even make them a worse goalie yeah, I think, um, you know, and it's tricky because I like to be diplomatic and I know that people genuinely are coming from a place where they're trying to help and they just don't know better. Um, so I think, you know, for one, like it's always, and there's some videos of like little kids and they're, you know, and they're so, and it's just cute, you know, like that's cute, you know, and, uh, but I think if like they're wearing their gear <laughs> and you know kind of going in their butterfly and popping up and going in their butterfly and popping up it's like no no that's that's just adding wear and tear you know to your joints and we want to save that those movements as much much as we can for on the ice you know where where they count um i think too like for me the sign of a a strength coach that i will trust is someone who if i say well why how does that help me uh, and if I get a good answer that makes, you know, that is science-based answer, uh, well, you know what, we do it this way because we want to tap into the anaerobic lactic system and, but then we're going to give this much rest to restore it. You know, they don't have to give you a PhD on it, but if they can explain it based on science, not just sort of peppering in sciencey words, um, then, you know, I think it's, it's good. Um, I think if they don't answer or they're kind of sharp, with you, like you're, you know, how dare you? <laughs> uh, then maybe they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. And, and then I think another acid test is, um, you know, there are some very successful even Instagrammers or YouTubers uh, giving away training of, you know, different sports even who have never actually earned a living as a trainer. You know, so it's like, have you actually worked face to face with people and earned your living that way? Uh, so th those are a few things. I actually shot a video too, sort of how to tell if your off ice training is working. I'll, it'll probably be posted in a maybe a couple weeks. But yeah, that's it's a it's a really good question. Yeah, and it's a great point. Something that actually, for those that have attended both of our webinars thus far on the goaltending side, at least, we talked last week with Justin Goldman about being creative and how 
there's a kind of this fine line that we need to walk as athletes where we want to listen to our coaches, but we also want to do what we know and how do you do that without being disrespectful? And I think this, this kind of speaks to that as well, where you have, you know, maybe your goalie coach that's asking different off ice exercises for you to do. And you need to have that skeptical questioning to kind of feel out, is this right or wrong? And have your coach not see that as disrespect that you are questioning a workout and not just being obedient and a soldier for that person. So some great points there for all of our goalies and coaches. Another thing you brought up that I wanted to highlight was uh, stability and stability training and, and how that's really athletics and what we need to work on. Um, and you mentioned some, some, I guess, machine exercises and how that limits the stability process when you are exercising. Would you say that in general, you always use a barbell, always use free weights because that's gonna bring that uh, free weight or that stability component to it? Or are there times and places for machines? Where do you stand on that? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, like I think of like barbell, dumbbell, medicine ball, resistance band, cable column, you know, things where you have to do some sort of stability and not standing on a ball. We just, let's put that right out of the yeah. <laughs> you know, equation. But, you know, I think machines um, probably have some benefit in like a rehab setting. So, you know, if, uh, if an athlete has had some kind of injury or or maybe they're recovering from a surgery and, and we really want to start getting some strength or control or teaching them how to engage a specific, you know, usually big muscle group. We could use it as a teaching tool or a rehab tool, but as a, a training tool, something that guides your range of motion or like a Smith machine, that, that isn't how we work. And, and we can't, so I'll give you an example really quickly when I worked in the sport medicine clinic, this is where, and, and working in the sport medicine clinic kind of impacted all how I approach training, but we'd be rehabbing football players and they'd always be busting up their shoulders. And, you know, it's like, we got to get them back. Like we've got a game. And so um, once they got to a certain stage, be like, okay, we're going to do a push up with our hands on a stability ball. And uh, you'd ask them, well, how much could you bench press? Because every uh, football player lets to tell you how much they can bench press anyway. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so they say, oh, I can bench press, you know, 435 four or whatever. So we'll say, okay, we're going to do a push up with our hands on the stability ball. And, uh, you know, so it should be easier because the stability ball is pretty tall too. So it's almost like doing a push up with your hands on the bench. And as soon as they bend their elbows, you know, the ball jumps to life and, and uh, you know, and they're almost like kind of bucked off of it. And so it shows that we can only express the force functionally that we can stabilize. So they're very strong to push something, but they're not strong to stable, uh, you know, stabilize and push. And that's what you need in sport. So it, it's, yeah, it's the same thing for like goalies, hips and, uh, we can't express force that we can't stabilize. To that point, you just brought up about the goalie's hips. We have a question from Mike Norton. He asks, how do we train young goalies to do the butterfly to prevent future damage to the hips? And I know you have an app that is fantastic that's specific to that. So maybe if you can highlight the name of that app and then and just quickly kind of go over some of the things that might help Mike and his goalie out. Yeah, so the app is the Butterfly Challenge, um, and you just search that in your app store. It's for free. But I think, too, the idea that we can train a goalie to not damage their hips is um, not accurate. So it's like saying, how can we train a goal, uh, pitcher so they won't uh, do damage to their shoulder or elbow? I don't think there's a pitcher who's had a long career that doesn't have some sort of shoulder or elbow dysfunction. And I think the same will be said of hockey goalies because what a hockey goalie does, much like what a baseball pitcher does, is not normal. It is not within the normal limits of human anatomy. So immediately we are trying to smash <laughs> a joint into an end range of rotation that isn't sort of natural. What makes it, I think, worse than a baseball pitcher even is now we're landing on it with the full force of our body weight. Now we're sliding into the post in our RVH so that our skate, you know, stops and then we're leaning our body into a position that the hip isn't designed to go into. So we're, we're trying to do is sort of minimize 
and also maybe identify, you know, and then the other part of it is that every hip and socket is a different shape and we don't all get the perfect shape. So some of us, you know, are biased towards more external rotation, which isn't great if you're a goalie. Some of us are biased to more internal rotation, which is a butterfly flare. So, you know, that's a bonus, but, you know, we can't all do the splits. We can't all have a wide butterfly flare, but we can, if we do the right training, we can see, okay, is this something we can improve? Is this a, is this a bony limitation or is this a capsular limitation or is it a muscle limitation? So, you know, when you do that butterfly flare, or a butterfly challenge, most goalies get about three to five inches wider butterfly flare measuring sort of from toe to toe, from beginning to end. Maybe, uh, you know, if I run a challenge with a hundred goalies, there might be one or two that say, I, I didn't improve at all. I did it and I didn't improve at all. To me, that's like, okay, something is limiting that. It's not just your soft tissue. It could be capsule or it could be bony, but to me, that would be enough to say, hey, maybe I'll go get this checked by a physical therapist. Not like a, <gasps> you know, but just see what's, what's up. Because then when we identify a goalie that maybe does have a predisposition to impingement or the beginning of impingement, then we can train them a little different way. We can't, we'll stop trying to smash them into a position that their hip won't go into because that just makes it worse. Hip impingement is a wear and tear injury over time by trying to smash your hip into a position that it just, it can't go into. One thing about that app that I really love and, and again speaks to what we always preach at the ADM is age, age appropriate training. And I know there's a disclaimer when you open that app that says, listen, if your kid is six years old, this is not the app for you. This is for a specific age where you're, you know, older and you're at a better place in your career to develop some of these skill sets. So to that point, um, we always talk about athlete first and building that base of athleticism prior to really specializing in the position we play. Is there a specific age range that you recommend where we do start to identify that, hey, we are a goalie. We need to do some extra exercises to help prevent injury and to strengthen some of the muscles that we're going to be using predominantly more than others in different positions. And, and when is that too soon for some of our families that have a really great seven-year-old that love goaltending and want to be the next Marc-Andre Fleury, but maybe are hurting themselves more than helping by specializing too soon? Yeah, and I couldn't agree more that like the, the goal up until sort of, in my opinion, like 13, 14 is to make a great little athlete and, and a little athlete that loves hockey, you know, that hockey is like this special treat that they get to play. Um, and um, cause that I think is another really important muscle. And then when they're 14, I think they could start doing some more specific training. And then like, I think, if the child has the, the potential and the drive and the discipline, then, you know, kind of around 16, it's like, okay, like now you're, okay, now you're maybe, you're a goalie. Excellent. Maybe we won't be playing volleyball in high school, you know, and if they are at that level and that is their drive. Um, certainly I work with kids that are good goalies and they still play high school volleyball because they just love to play with their friends. But I think as we get up there, it, it's kind of gets to that stage. Yeah. And, and to that point, I guess this will be another plug for what we're doing with our Goalie Nation, but we have Maddie Rooney today, Instagram Live. And one cool thing that Maddie had posted on there is that she played sports all through high school. And, you know, she's an Olympic gold medalist and was a starting goalie in 2018 when we won in Pyeongchang. And she has some excellent photos of her playing baseball and different or softball and other sports in high school. And, and so that really speaks to that athlete-centered, athlete-first approach when we are developing our athletes. Yeah. Uh, another, another thing that, that came up when you were talking about the hips and, and baseball and kind of that relationship between the shoulders and elbows of pitchers and potentially the hips of goalies is that, um, you know, pitchers have developed pitch counts for young athletes to make sure that they do preserve some of these joints that have shown to have damage over time. And in goaltending, we don't necessarily have a butterfly count yet, but we do actively preach with USA Hockey that you don't have full-time goalies at young ages that you make sure you have multiple kids that play goal and that our next Gordie Howe hat trick is that you have a goal and assist and a shutout all in the same game because with the technology and the equipment we have you can yeah. be a goalie in the first period you can be a forward in the second period and you can be a defenseman in the third and outside of developing a wide range of hockey skills that sounds like a great approach to limit the amount of butterflies that your son or daughter is doing at younger ages 
how do you feel on that? And have those been some strategies that you've seen and, and used? Um, I, lo I love it. I love the idea. I've, it's strategies that, um, or, you know, variations that we've talked about a lot, but it's the, and probably as you've found too, the application is a challenge, um, dealing with different organizations, but I'll, I'll quickly tell you a thing too, that, um, when, when I was in university, I was just helped on a study, but looking at, um, because baseball pitchers, if you, uh, lie them supine and take them into external rotation. So this motion, like they will be standing straight up, but this will be like that. <laughs> like their external rotation is outrageous. So part of the study, what the study was to see, is that a, a laxity in the joint, a soft tissue laxity, or is there a torsion of the humerus that it, it, the bone is actually rotated from, you know, throwing so much it's, it's formed a rotation in it, a torsion in it. And um, it, it formed a torsion because they'd thrown so much from such a young age. So I don't know of a similar study on goalies hips. If someone wants to do a master's or PhD, it would be a nice study, but, you know, intuitively it, you know, it seems like, you know, there are probably some, permanent bony changes if we're these young kids as they're growing if we're smashing them into the butterflies so I love the idea of them you know playing sports or teams having three goalies and you know those ideas excellent now we have a question from Colin Davis how can I get more flexible and we have another from one of our Facebook live viewers it's asking what's the current take on static stretching and so I thought those were kind of a similar questions as to that adage of static stretch, then dynamic stretch, when and why, and, and where, where do we all play on that? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think that to the first question is we, as goalies, we shouldn't be interested anymore at all about how flexible we can be. So uh, how flexible I can be is just like how much I can bend uh, and, you know, or with my leg, if someone takes my leg, you know, how, how high can I get it? That's flexibility what we should be interested in is our mobility. So what, what is the range of motion we can control? So for example, if I go back here to my thumb, you know, this is my flexibility. And now I'm actually trying to hold it there. I'm trying to hold it in place and see how it springs back down. That is my mobility. So I can teach myself to be flexible, but I can't use that on the ice because again, I have no control in that range of motion. And actually that's kind of where our injuries occur when we get out in those ranges where we have no strength and no control. And, and then uh, we exceed sort of the load bearing capacity of our tissues. So what we talk about now is more mobility, which to me is, is strength at length and even finding the whole range of motion so you know when I go to a camp um, and I'll work with and even like you know good players guys in the east coast and that kind of thing and I'll ask them to make a circle with their hip and so their hip circle might look something like that you know not not getting into full flexion not getting into full abduction not getting into any extension and even it, like I'm standing there saying like, no, no, like make as big as you can, as big as you can, because they don't even, their brain doesn't even know that they're, that, oh, actually my knee can come up as high as my belly button. So we need to teach that range of motion and then teach them to generate force because a lot of our flexibility, mobility, it's limited by our brain. I can, I can get there but I have no control there. Um, you know, so if you ever, those of you who ever like stretch at home and you're like, I can do the splits in my living room, but I can't do the splits on the ice. Thankfully, because your brain is like, uh, no, you have no strength. You have no control. I, I won't let you get out there. Uh, so the, the way we do mobility has really changed. It's, it's probably the biggest thing. The goalies that I'm working with now all of April is almost exclusively mobility, but it's not like the workouts are hard. So we rate our workouts on a scale of like one to 10. One is easy and 10 is like, that was brutal. And these workouts are coming in at like seven, eight. 
uh, because it's, you know, it's, it's generating that tension and using your brain to generate that tension and control in these extreme end ranges. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So then static stretching, we don't do very much static stretching anymore. I don't hate it. Uh, it do, and it doesn't, there was a study that showed a decreased max force production. Um, but it was a very small decrease. And then when you did a dynamic, uh, you know, warm up or stretch after it negated that decrease. So I don't dislike it for that reason. I just don't think it's that useful. I would still, you know, use it. I still use it a bit before I go on the ice because it kind of, I know what it should feel like. And if it doesn't feel like that, then I know ooh, maybe I better give that a little more attention. But, um, you know, so typically we do maybe some self myofascial before we go on the ice, self myofascial release, a little static stretch, dynamic warm up, and hand eye, and then away we go. So to that, um, one thing we see often with our goalies on the ice is the first thing we jump on the ice, we jump into our butterfly and we sit there and we stretch out our groins. Oftentimes when we see goalie schools, we see the very first drill of the day is everyone let's get to the center circle, all get in our butterfly and lead a static stretch as a group. And, and you know, I think on the financial side, if we're spending 10 minutes static stretching around a circle, how much money did we just waste on a $400 ice sheet? But then also from a physiology standpoint, I, I think we're seeing the mental benefit of that because it is a routine and we feel comfortable doing that prior to starting. Would you say that that's probably the biggest benefit at that point as to why we're seeing all these NHL goalies jumping into a butterfly to start is because that's the way things have always been and that's a comfort level? Or is there some physiological benefit to, to going through that routine outside of just the routine itself? Physiologically, I don't think there's a big benefit. I think the key point is doing a good off ice warm up. Um, but I do think, I do think it's almost like when I learned how to drive a million years ago, like you're, you're supposed to like walk around your car before you got in it <laughs> to like do a circle check to make sure there's nothing wrong. I, I see that those things, those rituals on the ice as a circle check so that, yeah, you know, you get in that butterfly and then you're like, Oh geez, my left side's a little tight, you know? And, um, I think I see it as more of that rather than, uh, Oh yeah, let's well, get your groins ready to go. Okay. And that's great to hear. Another thing that that kind of sparks is, again, we, we talk about our goalies changing often. And that maybe for younger ages, it's halfway through the first period kids are switching now. Or after every period, maybe you have one goalie that plays the first, one that plays the second, one plays the third. And we often get fear from coaches and parents that if their kids don't have this proper warm up, they may get injured jumping into a game. Uh, where, where do you stand on that? Because we do see that quarterbacks go in often after not having played for a long time, or certainly pitchers do. Um, is that more of a hockey thing that we just haven't seen, so we're not comfortable with, or are there actually some risks involved? Um, I, th I think it's, there's good, better, best with everything. And, and with football play, quarterbacks and pitchers, I mean, they can be warming up on the sideline a little bit. So it is a bit different in that regard. But um, with like young kids, like they are pretty bendy. You know, so I think young kids, it's, it's, it's pretty safe to do, you know, they'll like get recess time, they'll rip right out the door and be playing tackle football and you know they don't stop and like I better warm up and get ready to go. Plus, like, okay, so you don't ever switch or you hardly ever switch. Well, what happens now you're in college. And you know, you're, you're playing at that level and now your partner goes down and it's like, Oh my God, like I have to come in cold, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, psychologically, I think there probably is something to like, Oh, I've, I've done this lots of times. I think too, it maybe if you do it like period by period, well, then there is a little time to get, you know, a quick dynamic warm up, And even though you have your gear on, you can do get moving a little bit. And, but I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't mind it even psychologically, just so it's not a big deal to come in off the bench. I think not a bad idea. If, if kids start ripping their groin every, I'll change my answer, but. <laughs> yeah. no, we haven't seen that yet either. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're on the same page. Question from Zach Sizek, who's actually an assistant coach and a goalie coach for Lake State University. Do you think goalies at high school, junior, college, pro level should have a separate workout from the rest of the team? Any recommendations on how to accommodate both goalie specific training while not alienating them from the rest of the team? And I think, would love to have that answered even on the youth side because we do see a lot of times where goalies only want to do their goalie skating movements and they don't want to skate with the team or they only want to do their goalie specific stuff and 
And how, how do we balance that with still being a team and not alienating? I love that question because also I think a properly designed goalie specific program is like 20 to 30% different when we're talking about like a, like a gym strength workout, their mobility is going to be quite different and a lot, they can do that on their own time. But if we're in the gym, yeah, it, it's at 20, to th they still have to be strong. They still, you know, have to do their core work and, you know, all that stuff. But then it's like, okay, let's make sure maybe instead of doing um, barbell back squat um, and uh, trap bar deadlift or something, maybe we'll do a frontal plane squat lateral uh, and then the deadlift, you know, so it's, it's, it's just making some little minor tweaks that flows very well. And it's kind of cool because more and more strength coaches are in tune. Like some of the guys that are in my like private online coaching, it's, you know, it's like, well, what should I do? Cause my team works out. And, you know, so we talk to the coach and see, well, how do they want to do it? Sometimes they're like, Oh yeah, this will be, this will work fine. Or sometimes like, well, we really want you to do the team program. So they do the big bang exercises from the team program. And then we sprinkle in the, you know, the goalie stuff um, for some of the supplemental movements. But yeah, I, I do like having them together. I don't like the idea of them doing separate. I don't like the idea of them like just doing goalie stuff, <laughs> you know, cause it's like, yeah, they need to be strong, powerful athletes. So I hope that uh, answers the question. Yeah, I think, and, and uh, Zach, jump in with another if, you, if that didn't clarify. Um, no, I think that's great. There's, I guess one piece was at what age does that make perfect sense for you? I mean, is there a certain age where we're all developing athletes first? And then what age do we specialize? Is that 14 age that we talked about a little bit earlier? Is that really or is it all dependent upon puberty and, and kind of that peak height velocity or? I mean, that that's hard to manage, especially in our system, because you can't, you know, it's like, okay, so we're all in grade 10, you know, or we're all 15. And it's like, well, you're not doing this because you're not at puberty yet. And so you'll do that. And, you know, it, that, that just won't fly. So, um, yeah, I, th I think, you know, 14 is around the age it starts to make that transition. And then I think sort of depending on the level and where they aspire to play and their talent, you know, then sort of 16, 17 is when, okay, well, yeah, like now you're going to be playing at that high level and, or, you know, college or whatever, then now you got to start, now you got to start training like a pro. Mm -hmm. We have a question here from David Schwab. Where does the mental portion of goaltending come into play? You did mention resiliency, which certainly come, could be interpreted as mental toughness. Is this all part of what you do as an expert in physiology? Well, no, my job isn't to, yes and no. <laughs> my job isn't to teach mental, um, mental toughness or mental skills, that's a, that's a psychologist and a psychologist who specializes in working with athletes. Some of our training is the sort of mental toughness. So we'll have some stamina workouts that are just very, very nasty, nasty workouts. And we'll talk to the goalies about it and say, you know what, this is, this is a little bit of mental toughness training for you as well to learn that even though my legs are so tired and I am so feeling so crushed, I can still produce force. I can still focus on my task. I can teach myself to focus on my task and execute with precision to a point. Um, and so, and, and so that when they get in their season, nothing going to be as bad as this. <laughs> like, oh, we're in double overtime. Well, at least I don't have to do that workout. And it won't be something we do three times a week, but it might be in that sort of peak off season, sort of block of six weeks. We'll probably do that some very nasty at least once a week. That's like, uh, yeah, nothing's going to be worse than that. And then that seems like an issue we face, not even just in the goaltending realm is sometimes coaches using, you know, punishment for exercise or like you said mental toughness if you know like our miracle movie half that movie is them doing herbies for however long to develop mental toughness and and kind of that fine line between are we actually benefiting the athletes or are there safer ways to 
develop m- mental toughness that don't put the athletes at such risk physically. Um, yeah, and that are still achieving the training outcomes that you want. You know, so I think if you're doing workouts like that three times a week or whatever, or every time you do your, your cardio training, uh, then now you're not achieving the goal. Uh, you're not training the energy system that that goalie really needs to be the most efficient goalie. So yeah, I think using it in the right dose and, and, you know, explaining like, this is why, this is why we're doing it. Yeah. And actually that brings us to a perfect question from Burke Mallon, who actually I believe his son Matthew's worked with you for a couple of years now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. With us. Um, and, and it's to exactly to that point. So for his question is along the lines of when our coaches are doing some of these endurance exercises in practice um, that may not pertain to the energy systems that they're going to use. I think the common move now is, well, but goalies just do a bunch of butterflies. We'll have you do 30 up downs. And when we, what we know about from this hip issue, right? Like, there's got to be a safer way for us to train our athletes without having them do a hundred butterflies. And we do know that butterfly counts are something we need to be concerned with. And his question is, what are some of the recommendations you would have for ways to develop that uh, endurance or, or whatever that energy system is that we do need as goalies in a much more productive way than maybe having them skate lines or do a bunch of butterflies? Yeah. And Again, the on ice isn't really my realm, but so I'm just kind of thinking of, you know, uh, from experience and then applying the energy system to it. But it's similar to what what I tried to do with the off ice. Like, is there a um, variety of patterns? Um, so, you know, some of those might be from the skate, some of those might be in the butterfly, but not, not just, yeah, like boom, 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 boom. I was talking to a goalie who... Um, yeah, like they had to do like 20 up downs every time they let, let in a goal in practice. And it's like, yeah. like, excuse me? Like, oh, but it's really hard. Like even the goalies don't know, you know, <laughs> like, but it's really, really hard. And so, you know, I think like even, yeah, if you get in like in the circle and, you know, you're going to do shuffle to the end of the circle and then, you know, maybe do a butterfly slides across the circle and then a recovery, you know, something something that's a variety of patterns that includes some vertical agility, but not just smashing into the butterfly, um, you know, timing it out for sort of 20 to 30 seconds. Like, I think that is productive and that can still be hard, but it takes a little more um, precision with the recipe rather than just like, I'm going to make you guys skate until you barf. Yeah. And I, there, I, would... I made you barf. I'd love to to add to that too, just based on your rule number two and and really that mantra of what does the game ask of you? Maybe when in a game is your athlete most tired or if you are the athlete, when are you most tired? Then can we replicate that play? So maybe it's a PK. You're on a five on three for two minutes straight. Your legs are on fire. Maybe the correct, you know, conditioning drill is do a five on three, have some fun. It's now you're playing hockey. It's, it's exactly the game and what it asks of you. You're still going to be tired because a five on three is challenging with all the lateral movement and the butterflies and getting back up and the competing that you have to do. And probably, and again, you would be an expert on this more so than myself, but the mental stress of the game and the mental stress of letting a puck in that has to be taxing as well. And probably eliminating that stress of is the puck going in the net or is it not? probably will also play a lead on on your conditioning and being able to breathe through those moments. Yeah, and just learning how to battle, you know, and and I don't even mind if you if you you know put the goalies against each other. Whoever, you know, whoever gets scored on the most, you have to skate an extra hard lap. You know, something that's gonna be still hard after doing all that, but not like ridiculous. It's you know, and it's interesting too, even in practices when you look at like heart rate data from a goalie's practice. Like they're, they're <laughs> up here for the whole thing. When you look at heart rate data from a goalie's game, they're never getting in the red zone. You know, they're like, beep, 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 you know, and so again, it's like, even the practice is train is training the wrong energy system, you know? Yeah. Excellent. Well, out of respect to time, and we've basically had you for an hour here, which is so grateful. I know you've been crazy busy with all this going on. Doctor, sorry. No, I love it. I wish we could sit here for another two hours. I wish this was a podcast and we could just do, do this all day long. But um, if quickly you could just review your five steps for everybody that might not have had a chance to, to write those down. 
And then also, if you could remind everyone again of where to go for more information on your social platform so that they can really grow through this COVID experience that we're all in. For sure. Uh, so rule number one is stop saying because of COVID. Things, things aren't happening to us. This is something we're all uh, having to find a way to deal with. So for now, that's our new normal. We just look for the solution. We don't focus on the problem. Rule number two is we're going to look for a different way because we're not in our gym or on the ice, but we're not going to just uh, like reinvent the wheel and, and make up you know, silly things that, that just make us tired. So if you want some specific examples, uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is just Goalie Training Pro TV, or my Instagram, IGTV, I did a 10 uh, video series called the 10 Secret Habits of Pro Goalies. Um, and there's little mini workouts in all of those. So you can just follow those workouts. Rule number three, you're going to develop your skills. So what needs the most work? Your puck handling, your hand-eye training. You're going to wear your glove when you do your hand-eye training. Rule number four is be consistent. Like you're going to goalie university. So you have a schedule and you you know what you're going to do today, tomorrow, and next week. And that's physical, technical, and mental. And rule number five is you're going to build your most important muscle, which is resiliency, that you can make the best out of any situation. And we're just training for the next opportunity is what we do. Uh, in terms of getting more stuff, probably the easiest way is just follow me on social. Um, probably most active on Instagram. I am just at goalie training on Instagram. And uh, I post, you know, any programs I have or stuff, I always post it up there on YouTube. It's Goalie Training Pro TV. Excellent. Well, thank you again. This has been phenomenal. And, and I really can't wait to see what our American goalies do with this information. And again, let's use this as an opportunity for us to grow and, and leapfrog other nations. Let's get better today and tomorrow and, and as long as this takes. So 